1908, a meeting of British King Edward VII and the Russian Emperor Nicholas II took place on the roadstead of the port of Rival, now Tallinn, Estonia. Edward had previously been to the capital of Russia, in 1894 at the wedding of the Russian future Emperor Alexander III, but then he was in the rank of the heir to the throne. Now the head of Great Britain, Ireland, the British Dominions, and the Emperor of India arrived in Russia for the first time. Nicholas II arrived in the main city of Estonia by train with his retinue and family members. His wife Alexandra Fyodorovna, daughters Olga, Tatiana, Maria, and Anastasia, as well as Sarevich Alexei, came to revel. The retinue of the Russian Emperor as a representative of the authorities also included the chairman of the Council of Ministers of the Russian Empire Pyotr Stolopin and the minister of the Imperial Court Vladimir Fredericks. Tsar Nicholas II received representatives of the authorities of Revel and the deputations of its various classes. Then the royal couple with most of the retinue proceeded to the yacht, Standard. The English yacht Victoria and Albert arrived at Revel Bay a few hours later, accompanied by eight ships. Ahead was the duty destroyer of the Russian fleet, and then the mini-squadron of the British itself. Artillerymen of the fortress and gunners from Russian ships welcomed the arrival of guests with a cannon salute. The masts of all ships in the bay were decorated with Russian and English flags. On board Nicholas greeted the British king by saying, It is with feelings of the deepest satisfaction and pleasure that I welcome your majesty and her majesty the queen to Russian waters. I trust that this meeting, while strengthening the many and strong ties which unite our houses, will have the happy results of drawing our countries closer together, and of promoting and maintaining the peace of the world. An eyewitness recalled, while the guests were very cordial towards one another, it was felt that Edward showed some condescension towards his nephew, he seemed to patronize him, he warmly hugged and kissed the Empress, and then carefully looked at the Grand Duchesses, who looked a little embarrassed. Then he went up to the heir, Alexei, took him in his arms and kissed him. The King of Great Britain, Edward VII and the Tsar of all Russian, Tsar Nicholas II, discussed the implementation of the agreement on Afghanistan, Iran, and Tibet. Edward also complied with the request of the banker castle, contributing to the placement of his loan in Russia. Edward VII granted Tsar Nicholas II the rank of Admiral of the British Navy. In addition to this title, he was granted this wonderful sword. On the blade is the English inscription, to His Imperial Majesty Nicholas II Emperor of all the Russians from his affectionate uncle Edward Revel 1908. The Dowager Empress Maria Fyodorovna was delighted to once again meet her beloved sister Alexandra, the British Queen, with whom she maintained a prolific correspondence throughout her life. A luncheon was served on the Dowager Empress's yacht, the Polar Star, but no speeches were made at this affair. The menu was traditional for such occasions. At 8 p.m., the hosts and guests gathered together for a state banquet on the Imperial Yacht Standard. During dinner, the orchestra played while the monarchs made official speeches, both in English. The king thanked the emperor for the warm welcome, recalling his previous visit to Russia, when he was still crown prince, and expressed hope for the Anglo-Russian alliance to be strengthened saying, I believe that this will serve to closer uniting the ties that unite the peoples of our two countries, and I am sure that this will contribute to a satisfactory peaceful settlement of certain important issues in the future. I am convinced that this will not only contribute to a closer rapprochement between our two countries, but will also help maintain peace throughout the world," Edward VII said. Early in the evening, boatloads of German and Russian residents steamed about in the roadstead and serenaded the imperial and royal visitors with national folk songs. After the sun set and darkness set in, the warships were all illuminated, and the Imperial yachts Polar Star and Alexandria displayed special electrical effects. The following day, the Emperor and Empress received a delegation from Rival, after which they again received British guests at lunch, during which a misunderstanding occurred. The King turned to the Empress and joked about the terrible accent with which the Grand Duchesses spoke English. The criticism hurt the Empress, especially since the King himself spoke English with a clear German accent. But the conclusions were made and soon the Grand Duchesses were appointed a new English tutor, Charles Sidney Gibbs, who after the revolution would follow the imperial family into exile to Siberia. That evening, dinner was served on the royal yacht Victoria and Albert. Shortly after the imperial couple's arrival, the king faced a dilemma. Who will accompany him to dinner, the queen or the dowager empress? English protocol required that the sovereign's wife should precede the dowager empress, but this could offend Maria Fyodorovna, who was also his wife's sister. 
On the other hand, if the Empress was forced to take second place, she might well take the opportunity to leave. The king handled the situation with his usual aplomb. Taking both ladies by the arms, he declared, Tonight I will enjoy the unique honor of inviting two empresses to dinner. After dinner, the king and his imperial guests sat in comfortable chairs, coffee, and liquor were served. Around midnight, the imperial couple, having said goodbye to the guests, left the Victoria and Albert and returned to the Standart. Those who learn about this meeting between Nicholas II and Edward VII have a completely logical question about why it took place at sea, and not in one of the Russian cities. Historians have found at least four main justifications for this. First, Edward VII loved to do maritime affairs and was very happy to accept the offer to visit Russia in this way, but he feared for his life and the lives of the members of the delegation because of the unstable situation there after the revolution of 1905. Secondly, Nicholas I was categorically against the visit of the head of Great Britain to St. Petersburg, where he would spend a lot of time in entertainment, and the Russian Tsar did not like it. Thirdly, on the eve of the visit, information was received about a possible attempt on the eminent guest. Fourthly, the Bay of Revel was convenient for the protection of both imperial yachts by both military escorts of the British and the power structures of the Russian side. 